once upon a time, before Newcrest and San Myshuno were more than tiny villages, there was a kingdom that stretched across the land from the mountain to the sea. It was ruled by a king and a queen, and in due time, they were blessed with a daughter. The monarchs showered the princess with gifts, as did the lords and ladies of the kingdom, but along with those gifts, the baby had a terrible burden thrust upon her. A respected seer of the realm came to the court and gave the king the following warning. A terrible danger looms in our future, O Lord, but the baby born on the last night of the third waning moon of this year will have the power to defeat it. Now, all rulers are responsible for the fates of their people, but the princess was doubly responsible. She was, by nature, a carefree child. But it wasn't long before her father's lectures on her need to come into her foretold power subdued her smiles. The death of her mother after a brief illness killed those smiles altogether. The king was also devastated by his wife's death, and as his daughter grew, his anxiety about the looming danger grew with her. His sternness turned to bullying. His daughter became anxious and withdrawn. When the princess was 14, she began a quest to seek her power, visiting shrines and sacred sites across the realm. She met dangerous creatures that haunted her dreams. She prayed at churches and made offerings and begged her mother's spirit. Nothing worked. A terrible fear grew in her heart alongside resentment of the father who drove her and the fates that had condemned her to wandering. The princess had been travelling for more than two years when she heard tell of a hidden village, of a person with miraculous powers. Thinking this person might be able to help her, the princess travelled to their village. There, she found a girl, a young woman really, who could make light dance on her fingertips. A terrible suspicion grew in the princess's scared, angry heart. She began to ask questions, and so she learned. The young woman was the same age as the princess. She'd been born on the same night as the princess. She was the subject of the prophecy, not the princess, and she'd come into her power without travelling until she was exhausted, despairing and alone, without humbling herself at shrines and temples, without hating herself as a failure. The princess was furious at her father, at the seer, at fate. That was when one of the dangerous creatures she'd met came forward from the shadows and offered her a gift, the power to punish those who had misled her and belittled her. Furious, she accepted his offering. She was transformed. The creature attempted to rule over the princess, but she'd had enough of being driven and dominated. She destroyed him utterly. Then she returned to the castle and did the same to her father, and to the seer who had led her father astray. Ascending the throne, the new queen immediately sent for the girl who could make light dance on her fingertips, so that she could destroy her too. But the girl received a warning and fled into the woods before the soldiers could take her. The new queen had not just the power of a monarch, but of a creature of the night. Her people feared her, and her thirst was unquenchable. She feasted on convicted criminals at first, but the taste of their ill deeds did not suit her palate. So instead, she feasted on the young and innocent, who was sweeter. She was indeed as terrible as the seer had foretold. Moving as softly as the breeze, the girl who could make light dance on her fingers travelled across the land to the castle. She crept into the castle just after dawn. She found the place where the queen slept, in a coffin surrounded by bones. And she made the light dance for the fallen queen. One. Last. Time. <laughs>